Hi there, my name's Sam Harper. I'm the Head of Hydrographic Programs at the UKHO, and I'm going to talk about how seabed mapping and blue data fits into supporting sustainable development. I'm going to start off by talking about what some of the challenges are that we face, looking at how we can work together as a community, but then also have a look at some of the work that we've undertaken over the past couple of years. Now, the nature of the situation that we face as the seabed mapping community and those interested in the collection and management of blue data is that there is essentially a global deficit of data or a paucity of information, you could say. The IHO estimates that in the Caribbean alone, around about 80% of the uh, ocean basin still needs to be mapped. If we move to the Pacific, actually this figure increases to 95%. And I wouldn't want you to think that in the UK, we don't say, uh, face a similar issue. Actually, if we look at this diagram here, we can see that upwards of 60% of our seabed within our exclusive economic zone is still yet to be surveyed. As a hydrographic office, we commonly think about this lack of information globally as being a challenge for navigational charting. And it certainly is. If we don't have modern data, then we can't provide the user of the chart, the commercial mariner, with an, uh, a, a cohesive picture of, of where they can operate and how safely they can. But actually, there's a consideration here for hydrography in terms of a bigger picture. So what I've done here is I've positioned hydrography or blue data as a keystone activity or data type. Um, as that keystone in an archway. So from that very same data that we use for seabed mapping and the production of navigational charts, actually you can do a number of other things. So for example, you can create habitat maps, marine protected areas, that informs fisheries management, coastal zoning, that in turn forms part of your ocean's governance and leads hopefully to a sustainable blue economy. But you can go the other way on the archway. You can use that data to do inundation mapping which forms an essential part of your disaster preparedness. That in turn forms situational awareness. It helps with your disaster re response. It allows you to understand your seabed change in the form of an assessment, and that forms part of your disaster recovery. So what we're doing here is we're positioning blue data rightly in its place as the keystone or baseline to all of those critical pieces of, of activity that happen in the blue space. If you take that keystone away, then all of those activities suffer. So the other way to think about how blue data, seabed mapping and hydrography can contribute to sustainable development is in terms of the role that it can play in helping with the mutual delivery of multiple development goals. For example, I've picked two sustainable development goals, 14 and 9. The first deals with life below water. The second deals with infrastructure and innovation. Now in a situation where, a, a, let's say, an island nation wants to both protect its food security by the delimitation of marine protected areas, but also wants to develop its port infrastructure, let's say for the development of a new smart port, those competing interests can be married by a clear and holistic picture of the seabed um, and the, the natural environment. So 2021 will see the start of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. And what this decade will set out is a delivery framework to go from activities such as seabed mapping through to the societal outcomes that are going to be essential to see the transformational change that we need. So in bringing that uh, delivery framework to life, um, uh, let's have a look at some of the challenges facing our community in supporting sustainable development. Now there are many, and I've picked out three here that I think are uh, some of the most pressing. The first is, how do we fund and design data collection? Unfortunately, seabed mapping is an expensive and complicated task. At the moment, whilst we have made some good inroads into primary data collection, it's only tackled discreetly as part of individual projects. And when we look at the enormity of the challenges that we faced, referring back to the sheer amount of the seabed globally that is yet to be systematically mapped, we can see that we can't get away from the fact that more funding is needed. So the second is ocean literacy, capability and capacity. Many of the developing nations that we're working with that identify as large ocean states lack the people and the tools to undertake seabed mapping for themselves. This combined with the fact that we lack a shared lexicon of how we talk about and describe the ocean environment makes it very difficult for us to move forward in a sustainable development context. This is something that needs to be improved. 
The third is data access and the economic integration of associated value chains. Now, the OECD are doing some amazing work in identifying the various value chains that blue data feeds into. But in a development context, and in order to move us towards those societal outcomes, we need to understand how to integrate those value chains successfully into the economic context of a developing nation. So before we look at some of the work that the UKHO has undertaken to support sustainable development, I'd like to introduce our primary charting authority portfolio. This portfolio is made up of over 70 nations from around the world that are utterly reliant upon us for the production of their navigational charts, which you could categorise as critical national infrastructure, but also increasingly reliant upon us for the provision of marine geospatial information to underpin economic growth and decision making within their governments. Now, the hydrographic programs team from the UKHO has been working for the last five years with partners like the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office to deliver programs and projects around the world, making interventions that focus on data collection, interpretation and provision to service these economic requirements. So the first case study I'd like to look at is Belize. Now, under the Commonwealth Marine Economies Programme, led by the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, we undertook some seabed mapping activity in 2018 to support the production of new navigational charts in key areas where the data was really lacking. But what we did was we collected that data in a way that could be used by our project partners, the Centre for Environment, Fisheries and Aquaculture Science and the National Oceanography Centre, to do other work and to underpin other activities. Now lately, the National Oceanography Centre have taken that data and are in the process of producing habitat maps. What we've also done is present that information in a way beyond our traditional navigational charts in a thematic product that is designed to support coastal zone management. What we've also done is take the key stakeholders from Belize and work with them to develop um, a better and stronger hydrographic governance and what that will allow us to do is integrate those value chains that we were talking about more effectively into the government decision making process. And really exciting is that the data that we've collected is now being requested by a range of third parties, including the National Hurricane Centre from Miami, who have used it to update their for storm uh, forecast and inundation models. So the second case study I'd like to look at is Kiribati. Again, under the Commonwealth Marine Economies Programme, in 2018, we developed a scoping study for the government to inform the development of an infrastructure project funded by the Asian Development Bank and World Banks. This project is focused at improving the maritime infrastructure in the outer islands of the Gilbert Group, which includes the, the capital of Kiribati, Tarawa. Now, what's really exciting about this project is that for the first time, we've worked with not only the government of a primary charting authority country, but also the international development finance community to position hydrography, seabed mapping and navigational charting as a part of critical national infrastructure alongside the more commonly recognised physical infrastructure of harbours, wharfs and jetties. This is the sort of partnership that I think we need to do more of as a community, especially if we're serious about meeting some of the higher order sustainable development goals. So in summary, I'd like to offer three approaches to consider in terms of how we can make sure that blue data is effectively supporting sustainable development. The first is funding data acquisition agnostic of its end use, but that also speaks to the design and delivery of these activities. If we do so, we can make sure that these incredibly important data sets actually service multiple uses and be used by many different stakeholder groups. The second is, how do we connect the international development finance community with our scientists? These two communities need to come together to co-design and co-implement these important interventions. So finally, we need to organise the blue data community to speak with a clear and coherent policy voice. We are going to need the support of governments from around the world if we are going to meet some of these challenges that are set out both through the UN decade and the sustainable development goals. This is a really exciting time to be involved in ocean science and seabed mapping. And I hope as a community we can come together and deliver these shared aims.